वेलकम बैक गाइस आई एम योर होस्ट अरुण कुमार फ्रॉम डीबीए जेनेसिस एंड वेलकम बैक टू द डेली डीबीए एपिसोड्स गाइस दिस पर्टिकुलर एपिसोड इज बीइंग रिकॉर्डेड आफ्टर कोविड-19 लॉकडाउन दैट वाज इंपोज्ड इन इंडिया एंड एक्चुअली आई एम बैक टू माय ऑफिस आफ्टर एग्जैक्टली 48 डेज प्रोबेबली राइट एंड आई एम एक्साइटेड टू रिज्यूम बैक दीस शोस एंड आई नो यू ऑल वुड आल्सो बी एक्साइटेड regarding this daily dba show <clears throat> apologize to everyone who were missing the show i got thousands of emails so many comments below the uh, youtube videos where all of you were saying like when will this show is going to resume so now finally we are here and i hope if this lockdown is not increased or extended further we might continue to have this show All right that being said guys let us start our show with the first question of the day we have a requirement my client wants us to set up materialized view over db links with fast refresh what are your thoughts guys who does it like come on whoever has written this question this is something it will slow down your database and one more thing guys understand all the clients that you are working with they are not the dbas you are the dba so whenever client says do this what you should do is you should tell client okay you tell us your requirement and let us find out the solution because you are the dba right so if i am in your position what i would have said client is hey listen client i know you have half knowledge about oracle database so you don't tell me whether i should use materialized views or whether i should use db link along with materialized views i would ask client tell me what do you want to achieve right so any time if client is coming up to you as a dba saying like hey why don't you do this or why don't you perform this to achieve this or whatever idea they are giving you like in this case the client is telling can we use materialized views over db link i think you should push it back onto the client saying like all right i am the boss i am the dba you tell me what do you want to achieve and let me decide which is the best way to perform the activity so if your client is saying to use materialized views over db link along with fast refresh trust me it will break your system i mean it will be so slow assume you have a materialized view which is getting refreshed over a db link like there are so many dependencies right so you have network dependency and then you have materialized view then the source table all right so many components in one area so i guess if you are going with this option very bad probably there might be other great ideas which you can plan out and i think rather than me giving you ideas take this as your dba challenge and all the dbas who are listening to this question put the answers below in the comments tell me what idea or which method you would use or which new method you want to suggest to this client where client is saying like i want to use materialized views over db link forget about that because that will slow down the system so a db challenge to all of you you tell me like what idea you will suggest to the client in order to achieve whatever the client is trying to achieve right so one learning for all the dbas with this question is whenever clients are telling you to do this by using some kind of like half baked knowledge uh, because they are not the dbas right so you always tell the client okay you don't tell me what has to be uh, used or what technology or what option inside oracle app you use to achieve it you tell me what is your goal what do you want to achieve like what is your end goal and let me as a dba decide what has to be done all right that being said let's move on to the second question if i execute select statement multiple times does it guarantee the order of records will be same every time why do you think so so you are running a select statement right the order of the output records is governed only in case you are using order by clause so you write a select statement select star from employees right and you haven't used order by clause so no order by clause that means no order or the sorting of the output records that is plain and simple so if you are running select statement multiple times without the order by clause 
Oracle has no guarantee whether the output records will be sorted or not sorted or the order will be same every time. Not at all guaranteed. So if you want to guarantee the output records order, use order by clause. By default, even if you read about the SQL uh, like uh, principles, I think that's what we call it. So SQL language has some principles. So that principle says that the order of the records is not at all guaranteed until unless order by clause is used. So if you are not using the order by clause, don't even expect Oracle to give you like records in a sorted manner or in a fixed manner every time. Also remember guys, uh, like if you are selecting a data or records from a table, right? So what Oracle will do, let's take this is the hard disk, okay? Example, just a simple example. So what Oracle will do is Oracle will do a quick scan, okay? Let's say Oracle is scanning the hard disk from here. So it encounters the first record over here. So it will give the output as the first record. Then it encounters the 50th record over here. It will give it as the output. So while the hard disk is being scanned, whichever record which belongs to the table will be given as the output. So order is not governed over here because Oracle wants to give you the result as fast as possible. So while it is scanning the hard disk, whichever record comes first, it will throw it out right but if you are using order by clause what happens oracle will pick up all the records into the memory and then it will start sorting it and after sorting then only the output is given to the user so if you are not using the order by clause don't even expect oracle or any database in the world give you the output records in a fixed order you will never get it and it is not even guaranteed right that being said, let's move on to the next question. Could you let us know if enabling flashback has impact on the performance of the database? My question to you is, why do you think the flashback will have impact onto the database performance? If you think so, I think you're wrong or probably you have not worked much with the Oracle flashback. One point I want to mention over here, I'm not sure if I have spoken about flashback in the past or not. Guys, flashback is exactly similar to your archive logs, okay? So archive logs allows you to roll forward, right? Because when you perform a restore of the database and then you perform a recovery, recovery is applying archive logs. So it will roll your database forward, perfect? Now, when it comes to flashback, flashback is exactly same as your archive logs, but it is kind of a roll back backward method. So flashback will store the data in a way that it can go back in time, right? So archive logs is roll forward, flashback is roll backward. So ultimately it means that the data that you will have in flashback logs is exactly or almost same as the archive logs. Right? And this is the reason guys, whenever you are trying to estimate the size of the flashback location or flashback destination or flashback logs, the best way is what you do is you estimate the size of the archive log generation per day on the particular database, right? So on the particular database, how many archives are generated per day? For example, the archives are generated example 10 GB per day. So in a month, it will be like 300 GB, right? So what you do is you take this as an example and then for your flashback logs also, you probably go with 350 GB size as your flashback destination size, right? So ultimately the flashback logs are exactly similar as your archive logs. Now, if the archive logs is not having any performance impact on the database, why do you think the flashback will have performance impact on the database? So ultimately, and also guys, if understand, if you think there is a performance impact of flashback onto the database, why would Oracle introduce such a feature inside the database? I think no, I haven't seen it, but I would like to know from the experience DBS below in the comments uh, on this video, in case if you have experienced any kind of performance issues inside the database when you enable the flashback database. That being said, 
I'm telling you once again, there is no performance impact. At least I have never seen a performance impact of enabling flashback on a database. Rest assured, let's move on to the next question. My client wants me to upload 72 million rows from an external table into Oracle. The table to which I have to perform import has insert triggers. What are your recommendations on the load? Okay, so if you are performing a load inside a table, let us try to understand the situation from a very basic um, steps. So when you are inserting records into a table, right? So you mentioned there are some insert triggers enabled. So definitely you will have to disable those insert triggers, right? Because if you are loading data into a table and there are insert triggers and 72 million records are being imported, I'm not sure what type of trigger it is. So for every insert, understand the trigger will fire 72 million times so that is a huge performance impact onto your database what you have to do is first thing first disable the insert triggers second you have to understand what creates a problem when you load the data into a table like if you ask me personally it is constraints so if you have check constraints enabled and other constraints enabled onto a table it will create a trouble while you are loading the data so what you should do is disable the triggers. The second option is you should disable the constraints, if any, onto the table. Also, while loading the data, one of the biggest problem that happens is the application will start inserting records. So you as a DBA have to make sure when you're loading the data into the table, you have to disable the application or probably ask the application team not to load anything into the database. So sometimes there might be collisions. So you are loading the data and application is also pushing the data. And sometimes there might be uh, same record being inserted or there is issue with the sequences. It happens. All right. So the best idea is you keep it simple. You ask the application team not to insert any data while the data load is going. The last like uh, last idea I would like to give and share because the previous question was on flashback. Do not forget to enable flashback because that will allow you to go back in time in case you mess up with the table. All in all, I'll repeat all my four recommendations. The first one is in your case, you mentioned like there are insert triggers enabled. So disable those insert triggers onto the database. And then probably what you have to do is you have to second option is disable the constraints. The third option is ask the application team not to load any data. And fourth one, which is my personal recommendation, that is enable the flashback, right? So that will allow you to roll back in time in case there are any issues onto the table. That being said, let's move on to the next question. And I think this is the last one. Can you give me one simple example that causes row movement inside Oracle? All right. So as it says, one simple example, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. If you have a table inside the database and let's take you have uh, a column, the column width is probably number column and uh, that's the data type by the way. So you have a phone number column and the phone number column data type is number and the size of the column is probably 10. Okay. Now assume when you try to increase the uh, length or the size of the column, it might cause the row movement inside the database. So let's take from number column width, you increase the width from 10 to 20 that might cause row movements inside the database. The same thing goes with character columns. So you have a character column and character column width is 20. Now you decide to increase the character column width to 30 or 40 that actually forces row movements inside the database. I'm keeping it very simple and I guess guys that's all for today's episode. I am enjoying this daily DBA. That's all for today's episode guys and I'll be very honest with all of you. I myself miss shooting this episode every single day but unfortunately we all have to fight with COVID-19. I request all of you to stay home, stay safe, wash your hands as many times as possible and I don't want to sound like a TV commercial. I know we all are hearing this 
everywhere on our phone, on television, but it is real serious. Now, let us move on to the most exciting part and that is the bonus part. Welcome back guys, I'm back and guys, this one question was asked to me by a junior DBA probably who's working uh, for three years as an Orchid DBA uh, in some MNC but this question is very interesting and guys, I'm not going to answer this question, don't worry this is, this is of course a bonus question but this question is for all of you I want to know from you uh, like what are the ideas to solve this problem so let us understand the bonus question first so guys in most of the environment we all know like uh, nowadays servers are being created on virtual machines right now tell me this thing so you have one virtual machine where your oracle database is there right anyone can right click and clone the virtual machine all right and once they clone the virtual machine they can log in as root user if they have the root password and when they log in as root user, they can switch to the Oracle user and they can connect to the database as sysdba user. And once they are inside the database as sysdba user, they have access to all the database data, right? Now you all tell me, what is the way to stop the database theft? Data theft, we all know. Now this is called as database theft, right? Because somebody can steal your entire database. Now even let's take the virtual machine owners like of course in all the companies we have system admin team we have storage team network team and then the database team right so the system admin team is responsible for the infrastructure system admin team has access to all the virtual machines now if we want like system admin team also should not be able to look into the database then how do we stop the database theft I want to know from all of you what are your ideas all the expert DBAs you tell me if you want to stop the database theft even from your organization like anyone inside the organization even they should not be able to see the data inside the database what are your recommendations and how would you solve this problem and I would like to thank the DBA who asked me this question and trust me guys the answers which I am expecting, I feel I won't be getting those answers. I'll be giving my reply inside the comments below, probably your comments. Meanwhile guys, stay home, stay safe and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.